Hello, welcome to the Winter Sim and we're getting ready for Christmas and today's vocabulary uh, is going to be based on the vocabulary challenge. Uh, let, remind me April, was it number 84? No, no, number 85. 85. Thank 85. you. Yeah. <laughs> and it was all about parties, specifically Christmas parties. Now, um, April, you, you're at Sylvester Day party on your answers. Um, Sylvester is more of a German party. Um, it's basically, that would be a New Year's party. And we wouldn't say a New Year's Day party because it's New Year's Eve that you celebrate with the party. New Year's Day, you get over the celebrations. <laughs> That's right. Sylvester is also a New Year's Eve party in Germany. We don't call it Sylvester in the UK. Okay. So I would have accepted. Isn't isn't it an, another word for uh, New Year's Eve, Lynn? Not in I England. I think so. Or is it not in England? In no. in French, maybe. In uh, French, Eleanor. in Germany. It I French? know it's Sylvester in Germany. That's what they celebrate. But in England, in Scotland, in Wales, in Northern Ireland, we do New Year's Eve party. Okay. So a new, okay, and it's always uh, capitalised. A New Year's Eve party, okay, or a Christmas party. I would have accepted, but Sylvester people. If you went up to them and said, "Are you celebrating Sylvester this year?" They'd go, "What the cat?" Because there's a cat, a cartoon cat called Sylvester. We wouldn't know what you were going on about. <laughs> okay. Do you okay. accept that, April? <laughs> yeah, I have to. <laughs> no <Okay>. choice. <laughs> well, you can argue with me if you want. <laughs> now. Um, oh, it's impossible. It's not allowed to argue with you. Oh, you can argue. No, no, you're allowed. I can always yeah? kick you off the sim, but. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I wouldn't like to risk it. You would I'm dare. attached to your session. <laughs> Okay, yeah. um, Eleanor, did you see the actual vocabulary challenge? Uh, oh, I, I, I confess no. You didn't. Okay, no. well, what I'll do, I can send no. you a copy. You have to promise that you won't distribute it. Okay. Uh, but I can upload a copy of it. Um, because you're a student, I can do that. But it is one of those things where you have to not share it. Okay. Okay, okay, um, I, I understand. I'll put I'll put that on the, the actual thing, but I've just got to find it, of course. And that's always going to be fun. Okay, so bear with me a second. Christmas, where are you? Okay. Okay, and... Um, But if you say, oh, if you say Christmas party, it's not uh, on the 31st of, in the evening of the 31st of uh, December, no. then, Lynn? No, that's a okay. New Year's Eve party, okay? That would be a New Year's Eve party. Okay. Oh, that is a New Year's Eve party, yeah. That's it, yes. So um, just to remind you, because I know you won't be able to access it now, um, April, I'll share it with you as well. Okay. Again, not allowed to share it uh, with anyone else. Okay. So near me, April, Eleanor, select. Okay. I have to confess. Oh, thank I you. Copy that, Lynn. Oh no, it's okay, but don't don't share it. It's fine because yeah, you're I, it's, it's for me. Yeah, yeah. I have a teacher. Yeah, if it's for personal mm. use, I have a teacher's um, account. I'm allowed to share these with my students, but you mustn't then put them online or anything. I wouldn't get into trouble. You would. <laughs> they are under copyright. I happen to have permission to share them because I have a teacher's um, 
account I can photocopy them share them with students okay so I just I, I just like to say to people don't think oh this is good I'll share that with all my no don't don't do it <laughs> okay hey well done make yourself make yourself comfortable April <laughs> okay so can you both see the picture yes yes very well good. I can see it okay and I'll share with you the key because the, the vocabulary key is already on the forum um, as I say this was vocabulary challenge 85 but let's go through the individual ones that April did compare them with the picture um, you've put the foyer April so for number one you put the foyer you could say the foyer absolutely or you could just say the venue remember that word venue When you have oh, I thought a venue, a venue, isn't it uh, the whole uh, place? Slip? Yeah, no, normally. Because I thought that normally in these yeah? pictures, number one is the whole thing. The okay. whole, yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. So it could be the venue. It could be the foyer if it was in maybe a hotel or something. It could be the hall as well if it was in your home. So if we were to have it here, then you could say the hall, the corridor. <laughs> Uh, the entrance, because they're stopping people at the entrance. Um, it, yeah, it's lots of different words you could use to describe number one. Uh, what words would you use, Eleanor? Can you think of anything else if you look at number one to describe the whole thing? Could just call it the party. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, ah, it's not ballroom. The ballroom is the next one. Yeah, no, it couldn't be the ballroom. It could be the foyer yeah. because it's like the greeting area. Yeah. But it couldn't be the ballroom. That would be the main area. Perhaps right? entrance. The entrance, yes. Yeah, the entrance. Huh? Yeah. Absolutely. Now, by saying the venue, it kind of gives us a clue as to what kind of party this is. Um, that it's quite formal. I mean, the venue, the word venue can cover lots of different things from sporting events to parties to concerts. The venue is the place that an event takes place. Okay. Or perhaps the reception venue? Mm, I wouldn't use reception and venue together. Okay, yeah. yeah. Reception okay. area of the venue, maybe. The reception area, yeah. Where people are received. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, but a venue is a funny word um, in that it will work for lots of different things uh, <laughs> sports events, competitions, conferences, parties. They all have a venue. Now, if I had a party at my house, I tend not to say it's the venue. Okay, um, you could, but it sounds a little bit pretentious. Unless you've got a very, I mean, this kind of house, maybe, because it's quite big. And But my little house, it's definitely not a venue. <laughs> Just it's party at my house. <laughs> okay. The word foyer. It, it would yeah. be the living room <laughs> in my house. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, put your coats on the bed in the bedroom, that kind of a party. <laughs> now the foyer, that can be anything that's open to the public. Usually it means a public area. So the foyer of a hotel, that's the normal um, place where you'd find a foyer is in the hotel. But it, again, it's like the entrance hall. So you could say the entrance, but you could also say, which would be more specific, the entrance hall. Hall. Okay. Now we also have lobbies in hotels. So foyer, lobby, if it was a hotel. And we don't know much about that particular venue, so it could well be in a hotel. So, any questions so far? 
Uh, no, 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 I, I have understood everything, okay. I think. That brings us to everything, <laughs> Eleanor. <laughs> Sorry, April? Uh, uh, what did you say? I said everything. <laughs> uh, in me, this it doesn't, it doesn't exist. Uh, everything. I only, I always say I understand ninety nine percent, ninety nine point nine percent. But I, I did add. Uh, I think so. That's a very <laughs> it important was, uh, distinction. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> okay, now we come to number two, my favorite, because when I saw serpentine, I thought, well. The streamers are Serpentine because Serpentine is more, well, it's a place in Hyde Park, okay? Um, it's the lake where they go swimming on New Year's Day quite often, mad people in the freezing cold. But um, Serpentine can also mean winding and coiled. So I suppose the streamers are Serpentine, as in they're winding, coiled around, but I wouldn't use Serpentine to describe them uh. as the noun, okay? So they are streamers. Streamers? I, I thought it was a uh, tinsel. Ah, uh, tinsel goes on trees and glitters. Aha, uh -huh. okay. okay. So tinsel is um, very shiny and glittery and you wind it around trees. But in the picture that you can see, uh, no, three, yeah, of streamers. Course. Well, just and also they look like they're made out of one piece of paper, whereas tinsel is made out of lots and lots of glittering threads, load all bunched together. It's amazing. I think there might be a video on YouTube about how tinsel is made. It's fascinating. Now I'm not sure if I'm dreaming that though, because it might be something I've seen, and um, let's just see YouTube making tinsel. Tinsel manufacture, maybe. Yeah, how Christmas is tinsel is made. You need a tinsel Hello, machine, my name is Christopher. literally. I'm a <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, some there's even a little argument going on in this one. Okay. Um, a garland. And tinsel is not a garland. You can put tinsel around a garland, part of the garland, but it's not a garland. People argue about this stuff. It's like baubles. Remember baubles last year? <laughs> Somebody said Christmas balls. Yes. And I'm like, yes. no. Oh, baubles. <laughs> baubles, yeah. Okay, so um, I will share that one in the forum uh, later. And after I've watched it, because I'm always a little careful with um, YouTube videos. You never can be quite sure you're getting what you think you're getting. <laughs> but those I would definitely call streamers. You can also get streamers in poppers. Have you ever bought a popper? Those little things, you pull a string and, every, and something bangs and loads of streamers oh. come out. Oh, you've not lived. Uh, Eleanor, you've not this, lived. This <laughs> yeah, party poppers. You can buy them in uh -huh. most party shops, party poppers. They're tiny little plastic um, cones with a string coming out of them and you have to hold the cone and then pull the string and there's a little bang and then all these streamers come out and make a mess. Sometimes they're full of glitter but usually they're full of streamers and bits of paper and they just make a mess everywhere. It's great fun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, but you have to clean afterwards. I that guess it's is less the fun. problem. Yes. But you have three servants, three servants to do it for you, like in sense and sensibility. That would be nice. <laughs> Unfortunately, they are sl sadly lacking in my house. <laughs> okay, so oh, bear with me a second. I've lost my screen. I was doing this all through my German lesson yesterday. I had to have a German lesson on Skype, believe it or not because Adobe wasn't working and it was most uncomfortable experience. <laughs> okay. So you can you can call uh, streamers also garlands then, Lynn, yes. or is it different? What is no, the difference? No, you oh, can. It's the same. Yeah, not the same. To me, um, a garland is more sort of a round decoration, but some people would call streamers garlands, yeah? 
Uh, to me, a garland is something made of flowers and leaves. I hang a, gar a Christmas garland on my front door every year, okay? And it's uh, berries and um, fir, fir, fir cones, etc. okay? So for the coffin, is that also garland, Lynn? Uh, the flowers? Uh, no, that's a wreath. The... When it's to do with funerals, I would call it a wreath. Uh, okay. Okay, very distinctive. <laughs> But yes, in um, America, they probably would say uh, garland. Okay. That's more of an Americanism, I think, though. But definitely not serpentine still. <laughs> okay, then number three, you were quite right, April, a lantern. Now, it doesn't look like a, it's it's not a lantern that you can light. It's a paper lantern. So you might say a paper lantern. Just to distinguish it from a lantern with a candle in it. OK. Because a lantern can also have light uh, associated with it. But a paper lantern is usually just some kind of decoration. OK. Okay. Any questions so far? Okay. Then number five, garland. Hmm. I put party banner. Okay. Ah, that, party banner. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I would yeah, accept what's... garland though. I would accept garland. Mm -hmm. To me, a banner is more. Uh, sorry, the t the um, the actual picture said uh, party banner. I would accept garland though because it looks more like a, it looks like another kind of streamer to me. Okay. To me, to a yeah. kind of garland. To me, a banner should have a message on it, like Happy Christmas or Happy Birthday. A banner tends to say something. Okay. So I do accept your party banner. But the whole thing, all of them together, number four, is the decorations. And the balloons, I would accept because it's near and the balloons. balloons. Yeah. But if I, notice, I would say balloon. It's near the lantern, the balloons, you know, they're all there. So the whole, all of them are party decorations, yeah? Okay. I, I just uh, thought that uh, uh, it pointed... Uh, it's difficult specifically yeah. for the balloons <laughs> yeah. I thought yeah, about but then you have <laughs> number six it is also for, uh, on the balloon I, exactly <laughs> I, I I was a little bit sort of okay should I put little lines through but I've not got time for that so <laughs> so all of the above were correct apart from a serpentine don't use serpentine okay now number six is more to do with what the guy is doing yeah uh, speaker, I a uh, a toast. A toast. A toast. A toast. Yeah, he's raising it. That's what we say to raise a toast. Let's raise a toast to the host and hostess. Hostess. Let's raise a toast to 2018. Okay, uh, to toast someone. It always sounds a bit painful, but uh, <laughs> it just means to say, wish them luck with a drink. You can't toast someone with water or a piece of food. You have to have a drink in your hand. <laughs> okay. Have you ever, what sort of thing do you say to raise it? We tend to say cheers. What do you say to toast? When you clink glasses together. Uh, sometimes, mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes we said uh, uh, Gesundheit. Oh gosh! Uh, really? in, in, in Polish, too. Yeah, na zdrowie. Yeah. Yeah. This is the Gesundheit. We... Oh, no, yes, zdrowie, <laughs> I've heard. Gesundheit to a Brit means bless you. It's what you say when somebody sneezes. <laughs> and we do no, use the word Gesundheit. For, oh, on a toast. Yeah, for a toast also. We Not in the UK. <laughs> Not in the UK. To your health, you might say. 
yes, to your health, which would be a literal translation of Gesundheit, yeah. Uh, but we wouldn't say Gesundheit unless somebody sneezed. And we do use the word Gesundheit in the UK when somebody sneezes. We also say bless you when somebody sneezes. But um, to your health is more of a toast. Uh, we also say we say cheers, of course. Svanjiva, <laughs> which is Irish. <laughs> to your health. Uh, but sometimes it simply de depends uh, depends uh, on uh, what uh, uh, person uh, that raises a toast says, and uh, uh, the others repeat the last words or something like that. Uh, it depends on the occasion. That's very true. Um, generally, these are just standard ones. We we also say things like "here's to." And then it might be the person, it might be a person, it might be a thing, it might be the year, it might be Christmas. Here's to Christmas, here's to a great Christmas. <laughs> and it just means let's hope we have a good one. That's all it means, yeah. Here's to. It sounds strange, I know, but you will hear it at speeches and certain events when people are toasting something, usually, as I say, with alcohol in their hand. <laughs> You can even hear somebody might even say here's to you or here's to us okay oh mm -hmm. okay so uh, number seven you put master of ceremonies yeah I would accept that the MC okay or um, again a verb to give a speech to make a speech yeah he's obviously standing up there raising a toast to someone he's about to give a speech Oh, yawn, yawn. <laughs> okay. Now, the, the speech table, no. Um, it's not a table, for one. There are no legs on uh, it. It's pulpit. No not a pulpit. Uh, We're not in pulpit? the church. Oh. The ch so, thank you for saying that, though, Eleanor, because <laughs> that's exactly what I was going to try and point out. Okay. It's a lectern. Now you'll find a lectern in um, universities, okay? So you find a lectern at a university in the um, lecture hall. You might find a lectern. It's just ah, basically, a lectern. It's just, yeah, yeah, a lectern. Yeah. Okay, it's just a stand basically, and it has a a sloping top. You can put your notes on there, your book on there, um, your not you might be able to put your glass of water on there if there's a flat bit at the very top of it but generally it's for your notes okay and Lynn sometimes you have a, a similar thing just uh, for the musician for example to put their uh, music uh, book yeah is that also a lecture um, it's the I same it could, okay I think it could be yes um, yeah the music you mean for the conductor yeah yeah or for everybody or for the members of the orchestra for example mm -hmm. they have that also yeah i might uh, i might actually be tempted to call that um a music stand okay rather than a lectern I, I'd, I'd specify it that it's a conductor's stand or a music stand. Um, and definitely if the, the sheet music was on it for, say, the lead violinist, I'd call it a music stand then, not a lectern. A lectern is more to do with giving speeches and lectures. Okay, lecture, lectern, think about that. Music, I might be wrong, I'm not a conductor. <laughs> But I've never heard any musician. I've never been to a concert where they've said a lectern. Okay. Now, pulpit is very different. Pulpit you'll find in a church where somebody gives some kind of um, sermon. Okay. That's definitely for vicars, preachers, priests, the like. They stand at the pulpit and it's usually in a religious building. Okay. Even though they look practically the same. 
<laughs> ah, they look the same. Yeah, yeah, practically. Okay. I mean, a pulpit it depends ah, yeah. on the church you go into. If you go into a Methodist church, it will look very like a lectern. If you go into Westminster Cathedral, the pulpit is very grand. Lots of carvings of cherubs and stuff like that. So it depends on the place, of course. But it's a pulpit, okay? Okay. Okay. So, um, number nine. Um, again, it was more to do with the whole thing. But you could have called it the podium or the stage, absolutely. Uh, podium. Ah, uh, it's a curtain number nine. Oh. Uh, well, again, yes. I mean, use your imagination. It could have been the curtains, yeah. Could have been the stage, the whole stage. Um, a podium. It's a little bit big for a podium. That's the only thing, April. A podium tends to be quite a small stand, okay? It, like a small platform rather than a big stage. Ah. Okay. Uh, okay. Like like uh, the podium for the winners. You that's, mean that? Yeah, that's it. Exactly. Ah, so okay. it's like a platform that's just been raised so somebody can stand on the podium so that everybody can see them. There's also a great word, rostrum, as well. A rostrum. Uh, it's a Latin word, uh, rostra in That's Rome, it. for example. <laughs> Again, it's just a raised platform. Whereas this area, it's more like a stage. Okay. It's bigger, I would say. Uh, but I would accept podium, because you get the idea then. You know, he stood on the podium and raised a toast. Now, the, what they were looking for was the whole thing again, the celebration, the festivity, etc. But again, it's I don't mind whatever answers you give because it means you're looking, you're thinking, you're coming up with new words. <laughs> so we'll have all of those, even the curtains, I would accept. Okay. Then number 10 is more, they're looking for a verb here, what the people are doing. I uh -huh. Yeah. Oh, cheering. Yeah, they're cheering. Yeah. Celebrating. Yeah. To celebrate, yeah. So to cheer, to celebrate something, absolutely. Uh, party goers, I'd, um, I'd have taken. But you put spectators, April. Oof, spectators is... Um, they would yeah, be as involved. Yeah. <laughs> I'd expect spectators to be sitting. Okay, watching, not actually raising their hands and going woo. <laughs> so a spectator is normally somebody who watches a show, um, uh, a okay. game or an event. But yeah, because I have put, put party goers for goers yes. for sixteen. I saw. Yeah, that's yeah. why. <laughs> <laughs> but I I think celebrators uh, they're celebrating, they're cheering. I would have accepted all of those. Spectator would, is too static for what what's being shown in the picture. Okay, you have spectators at sporting events. Uh, you have an audience at the theatre. We've done theatre vocabulary before, so you have an audience uh, at the theatre or in the, the cinema, and then you have a spectator um, watching a football match. The spectators stand, they call it. Yeah. <laughs> What is then the, in the cinema, Lynn? Is that the audience. spectators? No, audience. Audience? Yeah, the cinema audience, if you want to be. Yeah. And generally, you can swap them around, but if you said spectators at a movie, uh, at a film, people would think it's a bit odd. Okay. And e even um, at a conference, you're part of the audience, you know. Um, could I ask a member of the audience to come onto the podium with me? Uh, <laughs> in a concert as well, a music concert, you're part of the audience. Because you're not participating, you are there to listen, to receive, to be a little bit less involved. 
spectators to me are more, yeah, uh, a little bit more involved, but not that involved. And you've got a 10D as well. You can use that for a conference. Yeah, the attendees at the conference. Every attendee should have a badge, that kind of thing. But you wouldn't have attendees at a film or at a music event. So those three words, spectator, attendee, audience, they are used almost you think they're synonyms because when you look in the dictionary to see how they're described they use them interchangeably uh, but they are specifically used in s different situations okay yeah uh, in uh, Dutch uh, audience is in a formal uh, situation mm -hmm. like uh, in the court for example mm -hmm. or with audience with the post with the pope i mean the pope. You, can, you can have it's an like that, that's, so that's, by... that's an audience that's not describing the people that's describing the event i've got an audience with the pope but i'm saving the world at eight <laughs> and if she says she needs me she says she needs me everything is gonna have to wait <laughs> So an audience there doesn't describe the people, it describes the event. And I think you, can, and you could have an audience with the Queen as well. I think that's something that you do with very high up figures. You don't have an audience with and me because I'm just a pleb. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, so am I, uh, I'm plebeian. You yeah. can drop a catsy. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so a very high ranking person might grant you an audience. But you're not a member of the audience then. Yeah, it's probably a one on one meeting with somebody very high up, way above our levels. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had an audience with anybody. <laughs> okay, number 11, very important the food. Finger food, I loved it. Yeah, finger food. The buffet. Uh, a buffet. Um, uh, a buffet. And you say Swedish buffet? I wouldn't say Swedish buffet unless it was specifically smorgasbord. <laughs> okay, I'd just call it a buffet. Uh, finger food is part of the buffet. Okay, so if you look at um, the word itself, buffet, okay, uh, it's just basically people serve themselves from several dishes. That's a buffet. Okay. But finger food, well done, April. That's very much part of a buffet because people tend to have a plate in one hand and maybe a fork in the other or they have to eat with their fingers finger food. OK. I am a finger food uh, uh, girl and not silver service girl. I don't mind either. I like being waited on sometimes, <laughs> but I love buffets because it means I can eat what I want. I don't have it foisted on me on a plate and I think, ooh, no, I don't eat squid or... Ew. Indeed, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's nice. And then, I don't know if you can remember the party food vocabulary we did, oh gosh, ages ago. But there's lots of different types of buffet food, canapé, hors d'oeuvre, appetizers, uh, all those things that you could describe the actual food, okay? Sandwiches as well, great finger food sandwiches. Um, yeah. Number 13. Um, but canapé is also a sofa, Ellen. What? Canapé? No. Isn't it, isn't it also, uh, does it, doesn't it mean also a sofa? Not in my book, no. Um, <laughs> it might be in French, perhaps. But I've never heard, I've heard oh, no. chaise, chaise longue, but um, uh -huh. I've never heard it. Canapé is for me a, a sofa also, <laughs> yeah. Tell, even in my dictionary. <laughs> oh, don't talk to me about your dictionary. <laughs> 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 okay, 
Okay, in Wikipedia, a canopy is a piece of furniture similar to a count to a couch. Um, 18th century France. Okay, but honestly, uh, honestly I've never. We heard use of a word. <laughs> Word can canapa in Polish. So, canapa, but okay. you you said it was something to eat. Yes. Uh, am I right? In the normal oh, parlance yes, I... in the UK, at a buffet, if somebody offers you a canapé, don't go and eat the sofa. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, good to know. Thank you. It's quite important. I would say very usually, important. Usually, usually you'll find a canapé is like a tiny little piece of bread or a biscuit with stuff on it. So Ritz biscuits make nice canapes. You can put some soft cheese on, an olive, or a little bit of um, peppers, something like that, and that makes a, a plate a, a savoury. It's usually savoury. You don't get don't tend to get sweet canapé. It's usually savoury with cheese, with meat, and it's a tiny again finger food canapé. Okay. Oh, we call that uh, that canapé. We call that toast. Yeah, to me, if you offered me toast, toast at a buffet, I'd expect a slice of bread toasted. That's not toast. We wouldn't call it toast. You might have some toast as part of a canapé because the bread can be toasted and then cut into little... It's always dainty. Canapé should be dainty. So maybe a little circle cut out of a piece of toast and then with some savoury items on it, a prawn, uh, sour cream, that kind of thing. But yeah, it's very specific finger food. Very posh, dainty finger food is a canapé, okay? That's interesting that it also is a sofa, I've, but I've never in my life heard of a canapé as a sofa. I'd be very confused. <laughs> okay, so, order of appetizers, finger food, all of the above. Very good. Number 13, yes, it's a sign, yeah? Yeah, sign. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's also <laughs> it's the, entrance, uh, entrance, the entrance. 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 Yeah. The entrance. Admittance. Yeah. Admittance as well. Signpost is a bit. It's not quite big enough to be a signpost for me. Um, but admittance, it could be entrance. Sign. Yes. Um, why not sign post? Because the post isn't tall enough. Okay. Hmm. I'd expect a sign post to be bigger and taller, more like a street sign, or the, the sign posts you get in um, tourist areas, you know, that say this way to the castle or that way to. <laughs> okay. How many miles is it to New York from here? That kind of thing. So it's inside, I'd just call it a sign, all right? So entrance sign, admittance sign. If it is like uh, the uh, exit and entrance uh, at the uh, exit top sign, of the... entrance sign. <laughs> Uh, it's exit sign. Yeah. Okay, so you call it exit sign. Yeah. Or just the sign. exit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, sign rather than signpost. Signpost, if you look at the dictionary, uh, Cambridge Dictionary, they say a pole at the side of a road. Okay, that gives information about routes and distances. And that's exactly what I have in my mind. If you said to me, have you, can you see a signpost? I would think outside, not inside. Can you see a sign? That could be outside or inside. Okay. Okay. Okay, so um, number 14. That's just basically that kind of table. Very, very popular in Germany. I wouldn't call it a stand table. We tend to call them bar tables or bistro tables. Uh, I ah, think what you were table. thinking of, April, was a statish. And that's what they call it in Germany. Literally a standing table. Statish. Because you can't sit at it, you have to stand statish? at it. Statish? Yeah, stay is ah, stand. Yeah. Stay. So if you literally translated that, you would get a stand table. But we don't say that. Uh, if you remember the nightstand, the nightstand, 
uh, slightly different. Uh, yeah. Things. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. This one with sort of for form and function. If you remember my my uh, different uh, conversations about form and function, it's a table, but it is a specific kind of table. So bar table or bistro table would probably get you one of those. Okay. If you Google, if you go into Google Images, and if you put in, uh, let me go to Google Images now. If you then, in English of course, put in stand table. Okay, you do get it, which is weird. That's weird. Gosh. Okay, but you get all sorts of different stands as well, not just tables like laptop stands, etc. Okay. If you put bistro table, then you get more that sort of decorative uh, table that you can stand at and different different types. Um, and then what was the other that I had was uh, bar table. Yeah, bar table. Okay, again, you get different kinds of tables, but you also get those that you can just stand at. Okay. And if you, uh, if, if it is not so that high, that you can sit around that, is that also a bistro table? If it is in a bistro, Lynn. It's more to do with the style, okay? Um, that particular style. You might call it a standing table, as in a table that you stand at, okay? But then you're likely to get some kind of standing desk as well, that kind of thing. Table is a very generic term. It covers lots of different things. But I wouldn't call it a stand table personally because people, well, nobody I know would actually know what that meant. If you said, oh, or they, oh I like that bistro table, I'd know what to look for. If you said, I like that stand table, I think, what, as a stand on the table? Or, you know, I'd look for something else. Okay. Uh, I will call that uh, just a high table. <laughs> that would be, yeah, that would be okay. High table. <laughs> I'd accept that. Okay, the, I think one of the problems you might have is we do have something called a stand. Yeah? So it's not just a verb, to stand. You can have a stand. Yeah. And that's something that holds something. Okay. Uh, for books, for example. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. So stand table would be confusing. Okay. Then we've got okay. number 15, and again, it's what the couple is doing, okay? Um, it's they've testing, got drinking they, champagne. They're drinking champagne. Remember, who put the pain Cham in champagne? <laughs> ah, yeah. Uh, champagne, English, yeah. you might hear if you go to a French restaurant, but generally we call it champers or champagne. Uh, they're clinking glasses, <laughs> actually to clink glasses. To drink champagne, I would have accepted as well. To drink champagne. And to clink glasses. A another thing we do when we... You can raise a toast, and that's when you stand in front of everybody and you say, here's to mm -hmm. uh, another great year. Uh, here's to 2017, whatever. Uh, let's hope next year's better. <laughs> but the action when you go cheers and you're sitting around a table together and everybody has to clink glasses with each other i don't know if you ever do that and what did you say then lin ting ting uh no ting, we ting. tend to say cheers <laughs> but yeah you can you can you might hear that especially if it makes a little ringing sound yeah you might say ching 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 <laughs> which is the sound it makes yeah that ping okay but uh, generally, you'd say cheers, good health, 
Bon appetit. Depending on the situation, what you're doing, if you're about to eat, you know. But everybody has to clink glasses to clink. For the friendship. <laughs> yeah, here's to here's to we would we would say for we'd say here's to friendship. Here's ah uh, okay here's, here's to, to yeah. friendship. That's it. Okay, so literally to clink glasses means to just gently touch the glasses so they make a little ringing sound. Okay. Then number 16, um, again, a difficult one, I'll agree. Uh, party goers, I will accept, yep, absolutely. Um, he's actually congratulating somebody because he's, he's waving his hand in the air and going, but look, they're also, the number 10 is also doing that. So it's a bit of a tough one. Uh, but yeah, congratulations would also, he's going, he's clinking glasses. He's probably saying congratulations. Okay. Number 17 is easier. What he's holding in his hand is the invitation. invitation? Yeah, that's it. Oh, yeah. Not a uh, ticket. Uh, I, uh, I recall this uh, two Georgian ladies uh, crashing right, the yes. ball. They didn't, <laughs> didn't have invitations. Exactly. That's exactly, exactly it. So you have to hand your invitation over in order to get into the party. Uh, if you haven't got an invitation, there's no entrance. In fact, the guy doesn't oh, so look that convinced, go. does he? Yeah. But the guy on the door doesn't look that convinced. The doorman doesn't look that convinced, does he? He's like, hmm. No, 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 not at all. Gloomy uh, <laughs> <space>. yeah. <laughs> okay, but let's hope their invitations are okay. Number 18, again, quite an easy one. Uh, the tray. Uh, I'm not sure. I, I suppose you were looking at the people, so I'll accept guests, but it was actually next to the tray which the drinks were on. Okay? The tray. Ah, okay. I didn't see. Uh, no, I, I saw the. I thought that the 18 is uh, pointing to the. The, the, people. the young yeah. man there. <laughs> the George but Clooney. Yeah, I would, uh, George Clooney with a beard? I didn't know he'd grown a beard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yes. I, would, I knew what you meant. I knew what you meant. Just anyway. guys. <laughs> and then on the tray, of course, we've got the champagne and glasses. Yeah, a bottle of champagne. Or it could be sp sparkling wine or Prosecco or Sect. Yeah, all of, all of the above. <laughs> or Cava from Barcelona. <laughs> Cava, yeah. Cava is very popular at this time of year. <laughs> And you could have a bottle, well done for putting it into um, a container, well done. A bottle of champagne, uh, sparkling wine, Prosecco, Sec, Cava, and glasses. Champagne glasses is what we would con call those types of glasses, okay? Uh, also flutes, believe it or not. Champagne flutes, that's the shape. Flutes? Yeah, flutes. Oh. Yeah. Glasses have their own vocabulary, I'm sorry to say. So a flute can be a musical instrument, but it can also be a shape of glass. A sort of tall, narrow wine glass is a flute, okay? Um, now, what are the other types of champagne glass? I'm trying to think. I think it's a slipper glass as well. Uh, depending on the shape. You've got the tulip shaped one and then you've got the cup. That's it. The cup shape. The the, what, the wider one. Okay. And you can get all sorts of different types of um, champagne glass and there's all sorts of mythology about what which which one makes the champagne taste best. <laughs> So you've got champagne flutes, champagne tulips, champagne coupe, um, and then something that looks like a water glass to me, which is stemless. So I don't actually like that one, to be honest. But here you go. If you're, I'll pop that in the uh, forum as well. I'll pop a link to the types of champagne glass. Very important. You have the right glass, you know. <laughs> then number 20. Do you have all the, those glasses at home, Lynn? I only have, I have one flutes. or two time. 
Ah, okay. I have. I have sets. one or two, maybe. <laughs> oh well, it's one of the few sets of glasses from when we got married. Okay that survived because we don't drink champagne very often all the other sets of wine glasses are there's like two or three left of them but the champagne set is still complete we've still got six glasses because we very rarely drink champagne <laughs> you know us we're beer drinkers really or red wine <laughs> okay so number 20 the waitress yes also you could say the catering staff Remember, waiter, waitress has got gender, and so nowadays, waiting staff, yeah, or catering staff, okay, that's genderless, okay. Waiting staff, why waiting, Lynn? Um, here, waiting's being used as an adjective. It doesn't imply that they're waiting for anyone. To wait on table is also a, ver um, a verb, to wait on table. Okay, so somebody who is doing the waitering, waiting staff, they work in a restaurant, a bar, or maybe at an event like this, and they are the people who are serving uh, the customers or the guests, okay? Don't think of it as a verb. So, uh, do do you mean that waitress is different than uh, ser ser no, they're surface? The same. Ser they're the same. Oh, okay, they're the same. What's the trend in the UK at the moment is to remove gender from job titles. To stop this postman, postwoman, fireman, fire, what, firewoman. Yeah, there are fire women out there. So, they say firefighters now. Remember when we were doing the fire fighting sessions oh, yeah, I, I remember firefighters yeah. that's it yeah and they're doing the same in most professions removing the gender so waiting staff or catering staff you can't tell whether the person is a woman or a man that means anyone can apply for the job if you apply if you put a job uh, for a waiter it's like you're saying we only want a man and that would be against the law <laughs> Okay, I'll, I'll pop another link in the forum um, about waiting staff as well then, okay? But don't confuse it with to wait. They do anything but... Well, I suppose they do wait around waiting for someone to ask for something, I guess. <laughs> the waiting staff waited for the order, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and the last one, outside, through the window, the fireworks. Which is where I thought you might. You, which is why I think you thought it must be New Year's Eve. <laughs> yes, April. Uh, yes, it can't be the uh, something else. <laughs> well, fireworks are now becoming the thing to do for a lot of celebrations. Sadly, um, but you know, people let off set off fireworks, let off fireworks at weddings. Not so much at funerals, admittedly, although some people have gone into space on a, on the back, you know, the ashes into a rocket and launched off into space. <laughs> what a way to go, hey? <laughs> but yeah, New Year's party, Christmas party. Um, and yeah, people, if it's a big event, they would have fireworks at a Christmas party too. Fireworks have become just part of general um, celebrations, yeah. But luckily, Can you set not fireworks anytime in Germany, Lynn, or well, in England? It's a difficult one. Um, legally, no, but more and more people do. Um, and there are calls to tighten, tighten the, tighten the rules again because um, people have become because I think it all started at the turn of the millennium okay that's when it changed because suddenly fireworks became the thing to do at New Year and then people went oh I like that let's do it for our birthday party let's do it for um, any event okay 
this year more and more forbidden even now for the new year's eve uh, yeah. a lot of uh, consoles forbid uh, setting fireworks here yeah for the terrorist also yeah, for the okay yeah i mean um the exception the rule in the uk it's not so much when you can set off fireworks it's as in date it's more to do with the time so for example if you wanted to celebrate your birthday with fireworks because it's not a specific date you would have to do it before i think 10 o'clock at night or something i'm not sure okay and you wouldn't be allowed to do it um at midnight however there are exceptions made for new year's eve for diwali for the chinese new year they've had to relax um, the law because of these other celebrations like Diwali, like Chinese New Year. It's not fair that we can have fireworks on bonfire night, but not they, you know, other people with different beliefs can't have fireworks during their celebrations, which are traditionally celebrated with fireworks. So, yeah, it's an interesting one. But it's very difficult to buy fireworks unless you prepare. So, for example, if I wanted to set off fireworks at my birthday in September I'd have to buy them around New Year or around bonfire night and keep them store them until my birthday <laughs> on Nolin, it's very dangerous to store them <laughs> I know but I'm saying that's what I would have to do I don't I have sparklers for New Year that's it okay glass of champagne or preferably a glass of brandy and some sparklers at New Year I don't let off fireworks and stuff anymore I, i'm too old for that kind of thing but I, i'll put a i've found a link so i'll put another link in the forum that you can have a look at about the law in the uk with fireworks okay but yeah you can set them off but you mustn't set them off um after 11 p.m it seems uh, and if you have a big event you must get a license if you use these big party style fireworks you would need a special license oh i've been kicked off the sofa it must mean that we're coming to an end yes we've run out of time so i hope you found that interesting and useful very useful yeah indeed Good. well at least if nothing <laughs> else it will stop you from eating the sofa <laughs> yeah penape <laughs> okay i've put up so you have learned <laughs> A new word from me. <laughs> I've learned a new word. Absolutely. Uh, that's weird. As I say, I've never, ever heard that, ever. But anyway, um, I've put up the, the video how tinsel is made and a couple of extra um, vocabulary, some extra reading for you, you can uh, do over the holiday. Okay. So in the vocabulary challenge, um, which I think I gave you earlier, but in case it's right at the top of your, there you go, you can have a look there. Okay. And if you have anything else you think of, uh, or anything else you'd like to describe in the vocab picture, you've got a copy of the picture now, you can add it there as well. Okay. But anyway, if I don't see you in TGIF, have a lovely Christmas and a great uh, start to the new year. Get your resolutions ready. And I hope you enjoy <laughs> your time with your grandson, April. It's going to be very special this year. Thank I think. you. Yeah. You too. Yeah, you have a, have a nice holiday really? and with your guests. Yes, I know. I've got to start getting ready. I've done nothing so far. I've got some cheesy puffs to offer them. That's it. <laughs> but they're not coming till Sunday, so I should be okay. <laughs> and you, Eleanor, I hope you have a lovely time as well. We will see each other, I am sure, in 2018. I look forward to it. Yeah, yeah, as usual, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Time flies, but I'm always here. <laughs> 2018, I can't believe it. This year's gone like a snap. It's just gone so quickly. I, I can't believe uh, it. Indeed, it's very gone. quickly, yes. I have the same impression. Yeah, uh, it means we're getting old, you realise. <laughs> ah, yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Not anyway, nice. Never mind. Thank you for coming. Take Not care. Younger. <laughs> So you take care and uh, I'll see you next year. <laughs> Bye. 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 See you next year. Bye.